start the podcast because I'm terrible at uh, like name pronunciations mm-hmm. and and as I told you before we started even just remembering people's <laughs> names yeah, poor uh, uh, so uh, can you introduce yourself for the yes. for the audience so I'm Jana Fazich yeah. Z- Jana Fazich yeah Fazich yeah. did I say Fazich I said Fazich. It wrong. Fazich yeah Jana yeah. Fazich yep. got it all right <laughs> Uh, and we know each other because you're also a comedian here mm-hmm. uh, in Berlin. Yes. Uh, and when did, I feel like I don't know. I know we met before this, but I feel like the first time we like actually like like kind of spoke a little bit or hung out was when we were doing the Berlin New Stand Up Awards. Yeah, yeah, which feels like. Years ago, by now, a lifetime. Like, yeah, now we're feels... seasoned comedians. <laughs> yes. We're not new stand-ups anymore. <laughs> it, but honestly, in Berlin, that's the feeling. Because if you throw yourself into all the mics here, you go from like beginner to oh shit, I do this regularly now, and somehow I ended up doing this as part of my living, and it's crazy. Yeah. So yeah, totally. but yeah, we we met. I don't remember. The the finals is when we were in the same yeah. one, right? Were we in the in the semifinals at one point? No, no we I think we were one. in the finals together, mm-hmm. and uh, I remember it because, uh, in my opinion, the funniest comedian in Berlin, uh, Tyrone, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, who's also American, yeah. uh, was like saying that he was pulling for us. Yeah, like, I yeah, want yeah. someone from America to yeah. do it. Yeah, um, yeah, we yeah, tried. Yeah. yeah, we tried. We tried. <laughs> no, I think it was a good. It was a good experience a good show yeah. uh i don't know how long you i think you've been doing it longer than me for sure uh mm-hmm. but that point when i was in the finals i'd only been doing it like five months or something which is crazy so yeah so i was yeah. just happy to be there i was just like shit i've I made it this yeah. far that's great like i'm just happy to be here well and also like i don't know about for you but like the uh for me the, the thing that i took from that experience i mean i didn't have this as much in the final but like in the semi-final like I had a really good set mm-hmm. and like in such a big room mm-hmm. and setting and kind of on like a moment where I'm like, oh, this really like matters to me, mm-hmm. you know, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. Uh, and that is like a emotional high that mm-hmm. is still like, whoo. Mm. <laughs> like- <laughs> yeah, I did. I felt like I did really well in the semifinals. And, the, and by the time I got to the finals, as far as my set went, like, I was like, oh, this isn't as good as I wanted it to be because I kind of mm. went really quick. And I remember asking Kat, I was like, I don't think I saw the light. And she's like, you didn't even do the full. I think we had like oh. seven minutes and you should the light at six. Si- yeah. I think I did like five and a half or something. Okay. Which at that point I was like, oh, shit. But then at the end I was like, there's so many of us at this point. Like, who, who's? Yeah. No one's marking based on yeah going yeah. under time so i just totally. yeah but i was just i remember feeling just like just happy to be there i didn't yeah. really care about the outcome i kind of just did it just to see if i could do it or how far i would get and because i come from like i'm a dance teacher as well so i did competitions and dance and i remember oh, okay. you know always telling my students to be like just do it for the experience yeah because if you really just cared about winning you're always gonna be tailoring it to whoever the judges are it's not mm-hmm. so much about and it's not necessarily always about you and it's just who the luck of the draw who you have so I just kind of went in with it that feeling of like I'm just happy to be here and to meet people and to network and try things out yeah Mm. yeah no I that is also like I my my feeling going into it was I was like this is gonna be like this this is a cool experience Mm -hmm. to get to like perform in like rooms Mm -hmm. these size being so new at doing comedy and like um and that's what I said out loud. And then inside, I was like, I fucking want to win, dude. I want to fucking win. But, you know, it is, yeah. it's, it's fine. But so you used to do dance teaching? I'm still a dance teacher. I kind of, especially this year, I took a break from it. Hopefully next year I can continue to do that. But I used to tour and teach and teach classes and stuff. And wow, what kind of dance? I'm a belly dancer. 
Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Anya used to do uh, oh, cool. belly dance. Yeah. Oh. So how did you get into doing that? Like, is that something you did since you were young? Um, I started in high school. I had a friend uh, who was from Lebanon in high school, and she showed me the music, which I really liked the music first. It kind of reminded me of, like, Balkan pop music. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I looked up classes and never looked back. So that's, yeah, I, I was very lucky to get to tour to do that as well. And and uh when i lived in england i started doing competitions there and i won the spell dance uk 2012 and other oh, competition wow. stuff yeah so uh so i really got more into it when i moved away from the states in the states i was part of a dance company so mm-hmm. we used to 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 do get gigs together and do other yeah. stuff and uh then when i left the states i really went into like the solo part and yeah um what uh, I have so many this is so fun because <laughs> I didn't expect us to talk about this at all but like I have so many questions if it's okay yeah, for you yeah, it's like, okay, yeah. uh, okay so I guess where I want to start is in like a belly dance competition yeah like what because like in a comedy competition it's very objective right you yeah, know yeah. like it's what is funny to some person might not be funny to another person yeah. um so like Judging art can be hard, Mm -hmm. but with dance, I could imagine there might be like it could trend slightly more towards like almost like gymnastics where it's like there's like certain moves Mm -hmm. and executing those moves and the combinations of them create some sort of system. Like how, how do you score a competition of belly dancing. Yeah, though you'd think it's more objective, but it's not really. It's not like so it's not like ballet where they have criteria that is the same across the world or or gymnastics like you mentioned belly dance it's very it is very uh, pretty much who's judging kind of thing because you never know yeah Yeah. so it is you would think it's more of a rigid scale of like did they do this this and that but it's not really and every we have a lot of festivals too and a lot of the festivals they kind of maybe cater to one niche and that's who the judges are. So you might have a few, there's just also different styles of belly dance. So it's like if you're more of a, an, an Egyptian style belly mm-hmm. dancer, but no one on the panel is that, then you're not going to get the scores that you would think that you would get. So I always went into it just kind of like, what can I get out of this even if I don't place? And that's actually one of the first touring gigs that I got was because I was in a competition I placed third and I made friends with um there was a Brazilian student in the workshop so you'd have workshops during the day and then shows and competitions at night and that would be pretty much every festival format for the weekend and she didn't speak any English so I was translating I spoke Portuguese so I, I was translating for her and we became friends and I ended up going to Sao Paulo to teach and I didn't even place in the competition to like that's yeah. the contact that I made from that so that's how I kind of go into these things just based on is there a, a person there that's kind of on the same wavelength of like what we want to do mm-hmm. just like a genuine friendship not just like what, what can yeah. I get out of it but it's just it turned out we became friends and sh- yeah and then I it turned over. into yeah. this opportunity yeah um were uh were your parents um like supportive of your belly da- like per- pursuing belly dancing and stuff because it's like yeah. it is kind of the arts yeah. which parents sometimes historically yeah. don't always love <laughs> yeah. um, but it also sounds like I mean you were like making opportunities for yourself yeah. and like having some you know outside achievements that you can mm-hmm. point towards and everything yeah my parents it's weird they're supportive but then they're also not under as understanding as sometimes I'd want them to be my mom she used to She's a really good artist and she used to want to become like a drawer. And, but then, you know, her parents didn't support it. So she kind of raised me to be like, do whatever you want. But, you know, a little asterisk is like, well, you know, of course you have to go to college. Of course you have to study. Of course you have to do these things. So it's like in my head, what I wanted to do or what I kind of felt always scared of admitting that I wanted to do was to go full in on in the arts and dance and, and to work for myself and all that stuff, which I'm just now at 33 doing Mm -hmm. if I'd had the courage years ago I who knows how far but it's like you try not to think about that so I still went to university I still got my master's degree I still did all these things that I kind of did to feel like I was appeasing the expectations of my parents uh who were supportive and they were like oh Shauna's doing this and that kind of even now in comedy they're like oh my gosh she's traveling doing this and that 
But then it's still like when I go home, it's still like, so, you know, why don't you just move back and take over the family business? And why don't you just do that as that's more comfortable and say, you know? Yeah. So it's like they're supportive, but also they're, I think, in the back of their minds, they're always like worried because <laughs> yeah. it's not the traditional route of any kind. And of it's course. not something that I ever expected to be doing. Like uh, dancing, I've been doing for a really long time, but especially comedy, I've only been doing a year. So to add that on top of it, it's like a whole other uncertainty yeah of where is this going if it's going anywhere at all so yeah it's weird because they're supportive but also like yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) sometimes they're not really well I mean I have that too with my parents where it's like they're they've always been very supportive of me in like everything that I do but there Mm -hmm. is this kind of like I mean you could go back to school if you wanted to (laughs) yeah that was an option that (laughs) was a whole thing when I got my master's I based so I basically only went and did my master's in in Kingston University in England like only as a way to get out of the states because that I couldn't just go because what I wanted to do what I was thinking about doing was either going to Toronto or Miami to join these dance companies and at that point I couldn't justify just leaving for that Mm. so I applied to master's programs and that was kind of my ticket out of Orlando and especially out of the States because I was like, that's where ultimately I wanted to leave. And I don't think I could have left without a sort of solid reason because if I just went to be like, oh, I'm going to go back to Germany just because I don't like it here, it'd be like, well, what are you going to do? How are you going to get money? All this stuff. Whereas when I had a master's program to be doing in England, it's like, oh, that's a reason for me to be there. So that's pretty much the only reason I did that. And then once I got my master's, my mom was like, so when are you getting your PhD? I'm like, for what? Yeah. Why are we delaying <laughs> living life? Like, I'm just, because that's essentially what it was. There's people there in their, in their 40s and 50s because they couldn't either find work back in the States or they're just kind of collecting degrees to delay living. Yeah. And I kind of looked around and was like, this is not what I want to be doing at all. And I just did it just to kind of feel like, yeah, I got this. And yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the th- interesting thing about like with that for me is that, uh, you know, like when I came to Germany, mm-hmm. um, it was really refreshing because it was like I came and it was like everybody was like my age. Like I came over when I was like for the first time when I was like 28, 29. Mm-hmm. And it was, everyone was my age and just finishing up their master's. And they had like spent their whole 20s like traveling mm-hmm. and studying mm-hmm. and uh and I mean, to be fair, now they're going through the struggle that I feel like me and a lot of my friends went through when we were like 22, when mm-hmm. you graduate and you're like, oh, fuck, like I just have to work now, yeah. you know? <laughs> uh, but the thing about that is I was like, that's so beautiful and it's so nice if you could just spend your 20s that way. But it makes a lot more sense when you don't owe any money money afterwards yeah 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 that's true yeah i mean yeah yeah. but then you leave the states and you don't have to pay (laughs) we are financial refugees (laughs) but so uh the when you join like one of these dance companies Mm -hmm. or whatever um the way like are you do you get paid like doing events like do corporate companies be like ah you come to dance for the thing or and then also it's like then ki- younger kids coming and you're teaching them belly dance. like Yeah, so there's people. So the dance company, uh, we would get different gigs. Uh, so some of them were parties. Uh, some of them were corporate events. Some of them were like other types of festivals that they needed dancers for. Uh, some of them were just restaurant gigs. And then we'd uh, rotate based on the schedule. Uh, there were people that if they wanted to start teaching, you would get the opportunity to start teaching workshops here and there, take over classes. Not everyone wanted to teach. Uh, I did. So I started doing that. And then when I left Orlando, I I would do other workshops throughout Florida. But then when I left, I started doing workshops in London, teaching classes there. And, uh, that's when I also started more touring because it was easier to go throughout Europe, obviously from London. So I was teaching in, I taught in Norway, I taught uh, in Munich as well at one point, and then I went to Brazil and Argentina and I taught there. Is there more of a belly dance like scene over here than there is in the States or is it it's equal? Or? It's equal, but in different ways. Here in Europe, because we have access to the Middle East more accessible, it's like four hour flights, Yeah, <laughs> uh, we have more of... of uh, 
Middle Eastern teachers that we can have at festivals and where we can just go over there and, and take classes. Whereas in the States, uh, it's it's harder. So there's there's an American style. Of course, there's an American style of yeah. <laughs> belly dance, of course. <laughs> I think there it's more different because there they're very... Is the American style of belly dance just Britney Spears with a snake? <laughs> <Like>. <laughs> Honestly, the amount of people that want to involve snakes in, in the poor acts. But it's not just America. It's It's... Uh, England too that's where I saw a lot of snake and it's like you know so I was at a competition once and there was like a snake charmer dancer there that was her whole shtick like, yeah I thought she got gigs too like yeah. that was her thing but what you don't realize is a snake like pisses just because it's a poor scared animal that just and you don't think about this and you're like how do you come back from that and that must happen so often and it's just yeah the snake is just peeing just as you <laughs> peeing it's on just you so like horrible <laughs> it's so bad and it's something you don't even realize uh, until you're watching it you're like oh yeah of course of co- yeah that of poor course. thing yeah i wonder what snake pee smells like it's, uh it's yeah it's not pleasant it's, <laughs> it's not pleasant. it kind like, of ruins it for know, everybody it's, it's still it's urine it's not but great <laughs> there's no way to like come back from it because there's dancers after you and you got to be the final act in that because then you have to have someone come and clean up the floors right after then it's even more obvious there's no like little snake diaper that you can like <laughs> use like wrap it around the tail it's a sock yeah <laughs> it's it's just a long stock. No. Yeah, that would take away from the like from the sexy, yeah. like snake charming, whatever. It's not even dancing at that point. It's just harassing a poor animal while yeah. you're trying to not get killed by it. Oh, <laughs> like, it's, it's not my, I'm not a fan. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Um, that's kind of, I, uh, you know, like in comedy, people like shit on like prop comedy and stuff. Sometimes <laughs> I feel like snake dancing is like the prop comedy equivalent. It nothing. really is. It really is. And ob- obviously it's not as common I don't, because you have to take care of a living being you know, yeah. to dance. But I just, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a fan personally. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, so let, let's, let's go back a little bit to, uh, so you um, from you have one of my like favorite jokes uh, from yours, and I won't make you do the joke on the thing. But <laughs> it's like you talk about that you grew up uh, Bosnian Serbian, mm-hmm. and uh, and then because of that you had to move. So were you like born over here or no? I was like, born in Bosnia. You were born, born there, yeah. in in Bosnia. Yeah. Uh, that's what I meant by over here. <laughs> I'm like, American. Over- I'm like, over wherever that's not America. Um, um, but yeah, so you were born in Bosnia. And so how old were you when you guys moved? Uh, I was two and a half when we okay. moved to Bavaria. So we moved to south of Germany first. Ah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And how long did you live in Bavaria? Six and a half years. And then okay. we moved to the States. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, and... So did you? So did you? At that point, did you learn German? Or I, guess I did. I went to school there. Uh, I had a really thick Bavarian accent as a kid, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and which is the German accent everybody wants. Yes, so, yeah. that is the sexiest of <laughs> the, all German the most accents. Most desirable German yes. accent. Actually, when I came here, because I had forgotten a lot of German, but I took German. I I had double minor in college in Spanish and German, so I was trying to remember a yeah. lot of it and and when i moved here i still had the accent because i was like that's what i knew yeah. as a kid but no one could understand me so i had <laughs> yeah. to switch to the lighter berlin yeah. accent <laughs> yeah so uh yeah but i learned german as a kid that was basically my native language during mm. that time i spoke german in school and with friends and at home in bosnian yeah with my family and um so your first childhood memories are basically like being in bavaria and yeah everything in germany and, pretty much yeah, yeah. And, um, did you, uh, did you feel like an immigrant at that point? Or, I mean, were you young enough that like, you were just like, ah, this is like where we live, blah, blah, blah. Or was there kind of an understanding of like, oh yeah, we don't live where we're from anymore or whatever. There was an understanding that we were not just immigrants, but like refugees, Mm. like, sort of unofficially because the way the German government worked at that time and essentially why a lot of us had to leave to other countries is because they were not granting the official status and they kept shortening the visas, Um, which is why we ended up moving to the States. But there was a sense of being very not German. Like I lived in a small sort of town in Bavaria. It's called Kitzingen. It's uh, uh, it's close to um, Würzburg. That's the biggest 
closest city that was the biggest city there okay. so Kitzingen is a really small I'm sure that town. means something to someone to Germans yeah. the, the, the many Germans <laughs> that watch your your, your yeah. podcast videos are like oh yes I came here for the Bavarian yeah. content yes <laughs> you could have been like I lived in Shubadudu which is close to Libidadu and uh, but like on the other side of the river of Shakadudu <laughs> pretty uh, much yeah, yeah. That, that's the place where yeah. I grew up and I I had a lot of German friends and there's the very very few immigrants i remember there was a family from india that i made friends with the, the daughters uh there and like kind of naturally just always being like with other immigrants the f- very few that we had there but i most of my experience was with other germans but i very much knew that i was not german because mm. we would go visit uh, when it was safe to we would go visit my grandparents in bosnia over the summer and then also feel like i'm definitely not very Bosnian anymore and it's just this kind of weird dynamic I kind of always knew that I wasn't in either place Mm. really and uh yeah I remember when I would be in school we would have it was Bavaria so we had Catholic class of course of course and uh, but I didn't have to take it my parents wrote a note being like we're refugees from Yugoslavia (laughs) we're from a multi-ethnic religious background we don't want our daughter indoctrinated by any one religion and then I just got to sit in the back of class and chill and just draw (laughs) so that things like that was very much like yeah okay you can integrate but it's like my parents were like, no, we're not yeah. having any of We're this. only going to integrate so far. <laughs> yeah. Learn the language, <laughs> exactly. but let's draw a line. Let's yeah. not become religious here, yeah. which fair enough. Like they, yeah. they, you know, they just came from, you know, civil war based on people not being religiously tolerant, <laughs> ethnically yeah. tolerant. So they're like, we don't want you to, to be indoctrinated in any one particular religion. So, yeah. yeah. And when you guys, so you said you, you guys ended up then moving to the States because of the German kind of visa situation, were you like excited, upset to be leave? Because I mean, I imagine it's like your life was your 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 life was in in Germany, mm-hmm. your friends and stuff. Uh, on the other hand, you know, America's in the movies. So, <laughs> what, what was yeah. your feeling when you guys decided to, or when you guys moved over? I very much remember, and I think any immigrant. Our immigrant child uh, will relate to this very much being like you do as your parents tell you and you don't have feelings about it one way or the other. <laughs> we don't have feelings. We're yeah. Balkan. We don't have feelings. We yeah. do we do things that we're expected to do and you better be happy yeah. with it. I don't remember being upset or excited. I just remember being like my parents being like, this is where we're going and this is your last uh, school year. Like, you know, kind of preparing me like we're going to get on a plane. The first time I was on a plane. So just wow. kind of prepping me in that sense uh, and just being How like, this is... How old were you again? I was nine, I think, at that point. Yeah, okay. nine. And so just kind of being like, this is what's happening. And then I remember saying goodbye to my teachers and stuff like that. But like, I don't remember being sad or happy. I was kind of like, this is the <laughs> situation. The, I feel nothing. <laughs> I feel nothing. <laughs> it's a very Balkan response. Yeah. <laughs> no emotions whatsoever. <laughs> I accept reality as it is. Exactly. Uh, my, pretty much your parents tell you to do something. You don't question it. You're just like, okay, you got to do it. Because I, I very much, much was aware of why we were there. Why? Because also six and a half years that we were in Bavaria, we moved six times. Wow. Because okay, my dad so. kept getting passed over for jobs and, mm-hmm. and or the visa shortening process and he had to go find another job to get the visa. It's this whole thing. So I kind of was very aware at a young age, this is the system that we were dealing with. So there was no, it would be very selfish of me to be upset. Yeah. That's kind of what was in the back of my head because my parents are sacrificing everything for me to be in this place that's safer and better. I have no right to be upset. Yeah. That's kind of the mentality that I had. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so, so, and then you're like, and I'm going to do belly dance. <laughs> no. And then years later when I was in high school. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, but, uh, but so you, because you guys were also moving around a lot, mm-hmm. you didn't have, it wasn't necessarily like you're like, it, you, you were kind of starting over a lot as far as like yeah. creating friends yeah. and like a community or whatever. Yeah. Do you have siblings? I have a younger brother. Yeah. He was born in, uh, Wurzburg, So in Germany. Uh, okay. And, and did that, um, like bring you guys closer together or we are six years apart. So Mm. when we were younger, we were definitely at some point we were closer and then he has his own life. He's very, very American for someone like, cause he, 
was three when we left Germany. Whereas yeah. I had all the memories of Europe versus the States and being like, where the fuck am I? Yeah. His memories are all from the States and that's pretty much where he is. So he's very American in that sense. So I he's think like, I love the snake dancing. <laughs> he's like, this is authentic. Yeah. Yes, this is. I came for the snake piss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If there's no snake piss in this show, I want my money yeah. back. <laughs> yeah. He, um, he's very American, but he's also very frustrated with it. So I think that's what we have a lot of things mm. in common, but I mean, he has his own life. He has yeah, his own whole thing. Like I'm always telling my parents and my brother, like, why don't you move? Why, you know, I have a residency now. I can help you like mm-hmm. come here and all that stuff. But uh, they're very much, you know, yeah. used to it there now. And it's hard to convince people to leave their comfort zones for yeah. something better. What was your, did you guys originally move to Florida or? Yeah, Orlando, Florida. That's okay. the longest place I'd ever stayed uh, in my life. Like 13 years I was yeah. there. We moved once when we were there. We were in apartments. So when you first got there, uh, we had the people from the Serbian church help us. And they would help us find us. So a lot of the people in Orlando, we know each other. Because uh, we were placed in one of yeah. two apartment complexes. So we like grew up knowing, like, <laughs> hey, you came here at the same time that we did. Yeah. So we'd had, we based on the districts and schooling like zones, and we went to school together. We lived in the same complexes. And yeah, so a lot of us know each other from there at the same time that we moved there. And we lived in an apartment complex, I think, maybe two years. And then my parents got a house, and they're still there. Yeah. So that was sort of the... Did you speak English before you guys no. went over? No. That's always crazy to me. Like I had I, yeah. two months to learn English, two, three months maybe, because we came in May, and the school year is ending, so it starts in like September, beginning of September. I had the summer to learn enough English to not be held back a grade. So we took, um, so when you're born, I don't know if it's still the same, but at the time when I went to school, even if you're just born outside the States, you have to take ESOL, Mm -hmm. uh, the English, like the second language classes. And, uh, that's how you learn English when you're there. So you're taking all these courses and in that format yeah. yeah i remember my, even my brother was signed up to take it but he lived his entire life in the states yeah. so you just have to then be like i speak english yeah. <laughs> like, you're like so can i not and they're like oh yeah you're fine yeah yeah <laughs> like, pretty much because it was pretty much anyone that was born outside the states and he was born in germany so they're like yeah. oh yeah of course you're going into this and he's like i i've no i speak yeah. english but yeah i had three months to learn enough english to not get held back and um yeah. I know that you don't feel emotions, but was that stressful? <laughs> or I know um, you're a robot that feels nothing. <laughs> I know you're a sociopath. You're like, this is my reality. Three months, I must learn. Um, but I mean, that sounds stressful, especially for a nine-year-old. Like, I made friends with an American girl in the apartment complex, and I think that's, if I remember correctly, I think that's pretty much. I just talked to her, and that's how I kind of picked up English, like yeah. more or less. And there was a couple of other people there that were from former Yugoslavia as well that were there a couple years before I was so they'd already been to school and I'd made friends with them and I we spoke in English most of the time and uh yeah that's pretty much how I think I picked it up I think I also was very lucky that I came from German to English both are Germanic languages it's not like I came from just Bosnian to English or any other language so that there's a lot of similarities Yeah. yeah and what was your um what was your experience like when you, I mean, I imagine uh, that you had some idea of like what America mm-hmm. is or would be like before you came. Was it different or the same than you had imagined? Was the, was it, did you, was it hard to integrate? Did you, uh, you know, feel like you found yourself there? I don't remember what my thought was as a kid to be, because a lot of the, I mean, I was at nine, so I was watching Disney movies, and it's like, yeah. oh, Disney World is in Orlando. Yeah. So that was kind of like, oh, okay, that was there, Mickey Mouse and all that stuff. I, uh, I I vaguely remember my parents being like, oh, you know, that's the nicer weather. It's like you can have a pool there. Our com- apartment complexes yeah. have pools. You can, yeah, you know, it's sunny. Yeah. And you can I, I have to out. say, though, I lived in an apartment complex for a couple of years, and there was a pool. Apartment complex pools, real sad. Uh, <laughs> they're, sad. they're not the like, <laughs> is that like a dreamy pool experience? It's kind of like. I mean, to be fair, America's sad. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like, I mean, I remember just being there and we're like, this is very different and kind of, I mean, we joke, but it, it's very much like, yeah, you got to get ready for school in three months. You got to learn enough English and all that stuff. And I also had a very different experience because I, you know, I was trying to, to figure out 
where do I fit in? And then I went to a public school when you people it was very multi-ethnic and mm-hmm. international in Orlando to be fair. And luckily I, I grew up there, not in some sort of smaller city. Cause I don't think I would have been exposed to nearly half as many people from around the world as going to public school in Orlando. But a lot of my friends were still, you, you know, from former Yugoslavia, kind of same situation. And then navigating that of not feeling completely Yugoslavian and not or Serbian and a lot of them are Serbian so not being only half and not at all being religious and these are people that went to the orthodox church and stuff like that and being like this was my friend group and then there's also some Americans and also a lot of Latinos then just being like ah I am very confused yeah. <laughs> kind of like <laughs> I, I got along with everyone and I had a lot of friends from everywhere because that's kind of how I had to grow up but then also feeling like I'm definitely not part of any of these groups Mm. at all. So that was kind of the thing that I had to navigate. And then when I was about, I think I want to say with 13 or 14, I think that's when I kind of realized that I was like, I don't want to be here anymore. I think America's Mm. not for me. I kind of miss, I miss a lot of the ease of living in Germany, whereas in Florida or in America, I think anywhere, it's very different growing up. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. What I realized later on is that when I think this is one of the reasons my parents don't understand why I don't want to live there anymore, it's because they had to navigate life as immigrants, as adults, which is a whole other thing. Learning language, getting all like the documents and bureaucracy and all that. Whereas I had to be an immigrant child Mm. and then now also an immigrant adult here in Germany. And it's two things that you, you don't know that you're working against a lot of the systems in completely different ways. Yeah. So like my parents, but getting a job and learning English and getting their driver's license and and a house and all that stuff. Whereas I'm like making friends or, you know, not to bring the episode down, but you know, active shooter drills and shit like that in Florida. Like, it's like, that's insane to me. Like I came like from Bavaria (laughs) sitting in the back of Catholic class drawing (laughs) to being like, this is what you do in case there's an active shooter. And it's like, what is it's, his reload time is going to be like that. <laughs> exactly. So wait, you have to, the textbook, you know, uh, yeah, Pretty no, that's, much. that's, yeah. that's wild. But okay. So this is, uh, I'm going to, um, say a whole long thing. That's going to get to a question. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> so, uh, when I was growing up, uh, because of the nature of like my family situation, it was like very, I feel like my experience, we didn't have a lot of like blood family around, but it was like all like chosen family, mm-hmm. whatever. So we had these uh, these people who were kind of like my grandparents, and uh, sh- uh, it was their names were Jack and Judith, and uh, Judith was this British lady, and Jack was this American guy, and uh, they had like she had like lived in a monastery in Nepal, and like took care of like little Buddhist like y- like ten year old Buddhist mm-hmm. monks, and and then they lived in Japan for a bunch of years, and anyways they were they were like a big influence on me, and I remember. The first time I like left the states, mm-hmm. uh, and and then like and, and was gone for like a, for like a year or something traveling, and I came back, and she was like, "When you live, when you start to live in a place that's like not where you're from, mm-hmm. uh, you become like you're no longer really of the place where you were born, but you're also not really of the place that." you've chosen as a new home Mm -hmm. you become like this third thing uh and as the whole time you were telling me this story i'm i was just thinking about that and and so now that i've said my long piece to get to the question (laughs) uh is is do you feel like do you feel like you're bosnian or german or american because a lot like a lot of what you said it just it sounded like you're like I'm. You're never really totally of the place, mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. like you fit in. So, do you feel mm-hmm. any connection to those places now? There's bits and pieces that I definitely am like, oh, those are habits I picked up from my parents, or from living in America, or from living here. There's, but I, I don't necessarily identify as one particular thing. Like that's the reason. That's the whole reason when people ask me where are you from. I never just say. It depends on the situation, but I usually just say, well, I was born in Bosnia. I grew up in the states. I live here. Yeah. Uh, punct. Like that's pretty much it. And it, I, may I suggest yeah. 
It's complicated. Yeah. <laughs> Don't ask me. Do you know, honestly, that's like the hardest thing about when you travel and you meet people and then it's just exhausting trying to, because people are curious and they want to yeah, know, but it's course. like, okay. <laughs> to go over it again. Yeah. Because when I say in Bosnia and they're like, oh, you're like, they think I just arrived. Yeah. They're like, your English and, is great. Yeah. And then I have to be like, well, I hope so. Cause I live in the States and like, oh, we're in the States. And they're like, oh, so the, or how do you speak German? It's always a surprise thing that it's either I stay completely mute and look really rude, not interact, yeah. <laughs> or it's like I have to give the whole spiel of like, okay, well, I was yeah. here, here, there. So, uh, but no, I don't really feel particularly one thing. There are definitely some things I'm like, oh, that's definitely very Balkan of me versus when the the way I, I would say the more aggressive paranoid thoughts are very American yeah. <laughs> having grown up there like I um you met Manuel not Ma- yeah. Ma- what Mauricio, Mauricio. Manuel. <laughs> Mauricio. I, I, I met her friend Manuel and I had seen him once before and then I was just like Mauricio right which was an insane thing to do sorry Manuel yeah all right and uh he had I mean you might maybe you'll relate to this but or maybe it's just the Florida thing maybe I'm just insane he had uh like the stand for the tripod mm-hmm. for for the camera. And it was really heavy. My friend was like, man, this is a weapon. And he was like, what? <laughs> I Ever? think that's, I mean, I won't say that it's a Florida thing, but also we did grow up in different countries. I grew up in California. Exactly. Like it's. <laughs> I was like, oh, this has some weight to it. He was no like, one what? was open carrying where I'm from. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I've never held a gun. I'm not a gun person, but it was just like my first thought was like, man, this could be used as a weapon. And he was looking at me like I was insane. I was like, oh, man, I shouldn't have said that out loud. Yeah. But that, those are things like that, like the thoughts I have. It's also maybe just being a woman, having lived alone abroad and travel. You know, you always have yeah. to be on edge or I feel like I always have to be on edge. But that's. I feel like it's a very American thought and then German or very Berlin thought is just being like, don't talk to me. Don't ask me questions. Don't <laughs> approach me at all. Yeah. Like, no eye contact. No eye contact. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm always amazed at how many people will stop me to ask for directions. I'm like, I do not look approachable at all. What yeah. is it with you? Why are you what, uh, 50 people here waiting for the train? Why me? And yeah. with my headphones in, Matt, like, I don't get it. That's the very Berliner side of me being like, please don't talk to me. Please don't talk to me. Please yeah. don't talk to me. I would, I hide behind not speaking German all the time uh, when people talk to me. People ask like, me anyway outside. in English. I don't know. They just come up. I don't know. It's yeah. it's insane. And I used to work in tourism too. So most of the job was giving directions. So maybe that's a little bit of the trauma of being You have like, the energy. You have direction. Uh, I have direction energy. I don't know. But then it's like, that's a really rude thing saying and floridians are pretty nice you know i'll be yeah. a little bit violent but usually pretty nice so when i'm back there my mom would make fun she'd be like oh you're definitely living in germany a lot longer than you think because i'm just like don't make chit chat don't make <laughs> just <laughs> buy my shit let's go yeah. <laughs> like, it's like i remember in and out. you're like why is this grocery lady taking <laughs> exactly. so long to hand me these like <laughs> we were in a store i don't know if you have ross in california yeah, you have ross? Ro- yeah. like ross dress for less yeah yeah, 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 yeah that's that's like the immigrant place yeah. to be. that's the hangout you know yeah. so my mom you know she we go shopping and I was remember I was buying like new luggage, and this older lady just comes Great up. Luggage like Ross under you know people people think you go to Ross for t-shirts, jackets, oh, no, maybe you dress go for clothes, the... the luggage, and also the kitchenware. Yes, yes, every frying pan we had for years was a <laughs> Ross <laughs> dress for less with one scratch already in it. Yeah, yeah for sure. So this, the luggage I still have. It's pretty. Yeah. It's pretty good. But I remember buying luggage and going to check out and this older woman just comes up to us and is asking us and she's like, oh, are you going on a trip? Are you going on a cruise? And I was like, no. And my mom was answering for it. I was like, mom, you are very Americanized now because yeah. you wouldn't do this in Bosnia yeah. either. Because she was like, oh no, my daughter, she lives in Germany. We're buying her. And I was like, why are you telling this stranger my life story? Yeah. I just want to get out of here. And she's engaging with small talk with this complete stranger talking about trips and cruises. And I'm there just like, can we go now, please? Yeah. Like, Let's <laughs> wrap it up. <laughs> just everyone wants to try to talk to you. So that that's so good to go back to your question. I don't feel like I identify with anything in particular, except there's pieces of me. I'm like, oh, I picked this up from here mm-hmm. and I picked this up from there. Like yeah. that. That's pretty much. I never thought about it, like just that you would like having to. Because like I like when also when I first started coming over here, I would always or when I first started traveling, really what I picked up very quickly that it was like, it was so much better to introduce myself as Californian mm-hmm. than to say I'm American. Cause like 
when you said when I said I was American, people were like, be like, either you get the like American. Of course, Americans always say like, you know, I'm from Peru and I'm also American. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, I get it. Or or the thing of like, oh, yeah, crazy times. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, yeah. I- Do you get? I have maybe you get this more because I feel like you, you identify as Californian, right? Like I'm very. I make fun of Florida a lot. Like I make fun of, I pretty, to be fair, everywhere, everywhere sucks. Yeah. That's everyone sucks. Everywhere, yeah. everywhere, everywhere, everywhere there's sucks. There's nowhere good. Everywhere. Yeah, there's yeah. nowhere good. Yeah, and uh, I, but I get a lot of people. It's always interesting to me when they hear my sets. I get one of two people coming up to me. It's either other Yugoslavians mm-hmm. or other Balkans being like trying to be like, oh my god, there's it, fair enough. There's not that many Bosnians that are up on stage doing comedy in English. Fair enough, but that always surprised me because it's like, ah, ha, ha, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I mean, we were, that's, that's pretty much where the, the sort of like relation ends of like yeah. trying to connect with me that we were from the same part of the world. Maybe, I don't know. Cause I don't know also where they're coming from. I don't know what yeah. their thing is. Cause yeah. Or I have Americans come up to me and then they try to talk about politics. They send me links like, oh, did you watch the midterm? I'm like, I don't want to know shit about shit. I didn't leave the States to be constantly asked about the States. So do you always do you also get people trying to like rope you into uh, to opinions? Yeah, I feel like I don't get it so much at shows, but like I felt like when I first started coming over here, like people also like this when I first came over, it was uh, 2019, so we're in like the mm. Trump presidency, mm-hmm. like all this stuff. So people were very just like, like, so what's happening? <laughs> like, what's going? You know, yeah. like and. And yeah, and I was kind of like, uh, you know, yeah. uh, that's the the one that's funny to me is that like I've had multiple times uh, Germans uh, like once they get comfortable with me, kind of conspiratorially be like, <laughs> "So do you own any guns?" Like, have you, that's like, I have a new it? bit about that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you heard it, but yeah, I have a, I have a, basically yeah, I get people asking me that too, and my response is always just like, "No, we're." It's a Bosnian. We didn't have guns, you know. Like yeah, we didn't. It's that's not good. a thing. It's, yeah. it's, no, I mean, You're like we would have loved to have. Now, why have a thing? It's like, well, if you ever meet a refugee that is really into guns, you should run because that's not a refugee. That's a war criminal. That's yeah. that's not someone you want to be around. Yeah. That's probably yeah. But it's a weird thing to me. It's like we still grew up, you know, in America, but like very much like this is a weird thing that I don't think we believe we should have but you know you dare you say that opinion out loud in most places like it's like oh you're trying to take away my rights and all that shit that was a weird thing about growing up there it's like you think everyone's completely it's like quote unquote normal and then they open their mouth and you're like ah what is that opinion yeah I went to a private college and it was very very small classes like maximum 20 people in the class in Florida? In, in Florida, yeah, in Winter Park, uh, Rollins College. And I remember just arguing with these people. We would have, I forget what the class was, but it's like argue immigration reform, like, you know, and that was the time where like build the wall type things and all that crap. And I was the only one being like, can we just have immigrants here? Like, because people were not realizing that I was an immigrant. Yeah. Were, but then they'd be like, oh, but not, you're okay. And it's like, yeah. why am I okay? Because I'm white and I speak English to you. Like, yeah. it's this insane level of of xenophobia and racism that you experience on a whole different level when people think that you're on their side. Yes. Okay, that yeah. is so interesting that you say that because I had a similar experience where, so I grew up, grew up in like the progressive bubble, San Francisco mm-hmm. Bay Area, whatever. And then I went to school in Spokane, Washington, which is like Eastern Washington, 20 minutes from the Idaho border, Mm -hmm. very conservative. Uh, And I went to a Catholic college Mm -hmm. uh, and it was the first time I met like real Republicans. I remember a girl in my dorm crying when Obama got elected. Uh, Like that's what we're doing. But that level of brainwashing, like do you think people cried when... Olaf yeah. <laughs> Schultz, like, do you know yeah. what I mean? It's that level of brainwashing. I think in the states, that's a whole other yeah, uh, it's, whole other it's podcast. In, it's it's insane. But yeah. but I had a similar experience, which was very um, disconcerting for me, and and caused me like a lot of problems. Ultimately, it was a good like part of my journey. But it was like that like people would be conspiratorially homophobic with me, mm. like 
you know, the fucking gays. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. Know? yeah. Kind of like what you're talking about. Yeah. But it's like people don't see you as an immigrant. Yeah. So they're like, I mean, these fucking immigrants. Yeah. And you're like, and you're well. Like, Wait, actually, that's. No, I'm. Yeah, <laughs> I'm on their talking. side. Yeah. I don't know why you're talking to me. Where am I? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but it's but it's also like, at least for me, um, I think what was challenging about that was also it's like I was a 18, 19 year old kid with very low self-confidence who wanted to be liked and it's like it like that was something I struggled with was like ah sometimes I didn't always stand up Mm -hmm. for like who I was or where I came from or whatever because it felt like I just like I don't want to make waves like I'm Mm -hmm. just I'm trying to fit in you know whatever uh which informed a lot of who I became so I don't like regret it but uh that I think is an interesting thing about when you kind of like can hide in plain sight or whatever yeah and that's kind of taking it back so comedy is kind of the direction where i'm trying to do more of my sets about that sort of dynamic dynamic yeah the sort of confusion cultural confusions (laughs) and it's kind of i i felt like i was like a chameleon basically because i could kind of fit in these places where i needed to fit in whether to be accepted or for safety or for whatever, but also not feeling like any part of that. So when I went to this more conservative college, the only reason it's conservative because we had a lot of Republicans from the North come down because it was expensive. So it was a lot of these uh, people that their parents paid money and donations and all that crap and they got in that way. And feeling like I was there on a, on a scholarship and the only other friends that I had there, because I also lived at home, so I didn't have that experience, the, the typical American college experience, the friends that I made were also other immigrants. So every day for four years, I'd have lunch with like, there was a Venezuelan and Polish guy, there was a Guyanese guy and a Cuban guy, and me, and it was just the, <laughs> the outcast <laughs> of immigrants there. And I remember one of the one of my friends, uh, he was Guyanese, he told me he's like when I first met you I thought you were just like all the other girls there because you know they were really stuck up or racist Mm -hmm. and all this other stuff and I was like I mean no I'm not but it's that was what people would think that oh yeah I can talk to her about these really insane xenophobic racist homophobic arguments and it's like oh no 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 (laughs) I'm not on your (laughs) side (laughs) I'm gonna go to the outcast lunch table (laughs) you've judged the wrong book yeah 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 and it's it's this crazy thing of like oh I wonder how many people thought that I wouldn't stand up for them because they thought that and you know that's why I kind of tried to be very vocal in in those classes Mm -hmm. and stuff like that to be like oh no 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 I am not on your side at all because this is an insane thing you're arguing I in my opinion I remember in that same class there was a girl she was talking about how and the privilege of it all she was talking about how she went to somewhere in Africa I don't remember where and she would have these servants at this hotel and all this stuff they just completely yeah not in touch with reality and just talking about that in the same sentence as she was saying like well why is it america's job to help people help yeah. immigrants why should we care <laughs> i mean like nice yeah. yeah so i mean i wouldn't be surprised if in a couple of years you see her <laughs> at the <Republican laughs> party but it was that kind of experience we're going from public school in orlando where a lot of my friends were from all over i had a lot of serbian friends that had a lot of colombian friends puerto rican cuban yeah. from everywhere and then being like in this in this private college of being like these are people I would never choose to hang out with. And now I'm stuck in these classes with them and that I'm paying money for a fucking private (laughs) college. So yeah, that was, uh, that was, that was an experience. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so let, let's, uh, since you, you also, you kind of mentioned comedy, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about that. Like, Mm -hmm. so what was your, um, like first exposure to that kind of thing? Cause uh, so we're like the same age. So I feel like we also grew up in the same era of like movies and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, this kind of stuff. Um, but so what, yeah, what was your first exp- like exposure to comedy? And just to give like, for me, like when I was a kid, my par- uh, my godparents would always like show me SNL, mm-hmm. like, or like we would mm-hmm. watch SNL or we'd like rent the like best of Eddie Murphy on mm-hmm. SNL or whatever. And I feel like that was kind of like my first time being like, Ooh, like comedy or yeah. whatever uh but how what was how did you kind of discover that stuff i think it was when we when i lived in the states when we moved there and then comedy central would always have someone special yeah. on and so 
my brother and I would watch Comedy Central together and watch these Sam specials. And I remember always kind of always having a connection. Like that was the thing my brother and I had in common that we enjoyed because we were six years apart, but we still yeah. could watch that. Probably we shouldn't watch it, but again, Balkan parents aren't yeah. as rigid <laughs> <laughs> about <laughs> language. Like, no one's getting murdered. There's no tits. It's fine. Like. <laughs> Even that, they'd be like, it's better than, yeah. you know, whatever. So, uh, so we'd watch these comedy specials. I don't remember who the very first comedian i might have watched but i do remember mike barbiglia standing out to me and oh, that was yeah. who i kind of followed his journey yeah uh, it, his original like the because because comedy central uh used to do the like comedy central presents the, mm -hmm. the 30 minutes so was it his like it, half hour it or? might have been i don't yeah. remember it might have been his very first one uh because i remember he had then a book about his sleepwalking yeah how how basically how he like jumped yeah, yeah. through a hotel and, and he had the sleepwalking disorder and all that stuff and i remember that i remember bo burnham as well and yeah. uh kind of following their journeys that way and then kind of seeing how they've evolved since then so those two i, I very much remember yeah uh, growing up with sort of mm -hmm. watching them and then always wanting to be like to do it especially when netflix came out when when they had all the the comedy specials i was like oh that's really interesting and when i came to berlin one of the things that i did was go to a lot of comedy shows so all these people that were now doing shows with i used to watch them all the, yeah. the tyrones of the world the carmen's yeah. of the world all these people <laughs> i used to watch um them perform all the time and that's pretty much the only thing that i did here i didn't know anybody here and that's kind of what you could do when you didn't know what you're doing yeah. and have money and you know. it's a great way to like yeah. socialize which by the way if you're lonely out there in germany <laughs> check out our shows yes. uh, come have a laugh meet people yeah but that's become honestly a comedian. How, yeah become a comedian yeah so for the longest time i watched uh, stand-up comedy and then i watched the specials and i always thought it was it would be cool to do it mm -hmm. but i was like what's the point and i don't for me it's like what's the way I was thinking, what's the point of trying if I don't know the outcome kind of thing? And then last year, I kind of just said, well, fuck it. Let me try. I went through a breakup and I was kind of just trying to throw myself into anything that was remotely interesting to me just to get out of the funk and, you know, yeah. start feeling better. And I signed up. Uh, I asked Lena for a spot at her show and then i went to helsinki for a week to visit my friend and watch eliza schlesinger oh yeah perform. of course yeah and then i remember being at the airport i was having a hauling i was like oh should i do five minutes i don't know i don't yeah. know and i remember being at the airport on my way to go watch eliza and visit my friend and i was like fuck it i'm just gonna i'm just gonna say yeah. <laughs> and so i messaged lena because she was like i'll definitely give you five minutes because i'd seen her on another show and stuff and then two, it was like in two weeks so I had time to write and figure out what I wanted to say and all that. And I saw Eliza. I got to talk to her as well after. Oh, cool. her, yeah. So that was kind of like the build up to that. And then I did the five minutes and I saw I didn't die. And I was yeah. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then a year um, later. what was your because uh, I feel like it's always uh, like it's interesting, like when you when you first. Like the idea when you first said like I want to perform and then you're like I gotta like so what am I gonna say yeah you know um, for me I felt like I like I w <laughs> this sounds so me but uh, <laughs> like I would get high and I felt like I would like do like I'd be like washing the dishes and I'm like I'm killing in my head right now <laughs> like I'm murdering to a stadium and I was like this shouldn't be that hard to translate but then when you sit down and try to write something it was like oof you know so what was was that overwhelming like did you already have some ideas of like oh i want to talk about like my background yeah. or whatever as soon as i had the idea to maybe try it one day this is maybe a couple months leading up to that i started just in my notes app just writing out things that i thought maybe were funny and so i had a whole thing of things to choose from and then obviously when we'd be our friends and cracking jokes and stuff and they'd be like oh you should talk about that i'd remember it so my first set it was five minutes it was, if I remember it now, if it was very much just about being this immigrant person that lived in Florida and living here. And that was, yeah, pretty much most of it was about that kind of like my background and how odd it is. And yeah, I think I had a thing about you can't be, you know, a former refugee, half Muslim that also speaks Arabic and live in Florida. Otherwise, the CAA is on oh, your yeah. ass and Fox <laughs> News comes out of the bushes. And 
So yeah. kind of that that was sort of the direction that I had my my five minutes. I remember though I was practicing for days up until because I did not want to go over the five minutes and piss off Lena. Oh, I didn't want to piss yeah. off the organizer because <laughs> she told me to like I, I knew how that worked, but I was really very conscious of that time and I didn't yeah. want to be the newbie that went over her time. So I was like, this is gonna be five minutes exact. And I remember being very nervous if someone was starting to talk to me or heckle or oh, something. Yeah. I was like, I don't know what the hell I would do in that situation. Like no crowd or nothing. Yeah. And then now it's, I encourage it. Yeah. <laughs> like I go out and ask yeah. people. Cause it, yeah. So I remember telling my friends of being like, I have no idea if someone asks or says something, I have no idea how to respond. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. I just want to do my five minutes to sit down. And uh, yeah, it went fairly well. I think for five minutes, I, um, I didn't forget anything. I was very proud of that because that was another thing. I didn't know if I was going to remember my full set. Yeah, like what if you go blank? Or, yeah, what if I go blank? Yeah. yeah, that was another fear because I'd been having like memory issues the last couple of years just remembering basic things. So that was another thing. I was like, what if I forget what I want to say? And it went well. And my friends were there also. I had about five or six friends that came support. Uh, and I got all the good feedback from the comedians themselves too. So Lena and I forget his name because I'd only seen him once. Is it? the italian oh uh i know who you're talking about Sprafico is his last name I don't yeah. know his, i'm so sorry if you're in case That's, you come across this yeah i'd only seen him once or twice and both of them which they didn't have to but both of them were like you keep doing it like you're yeah. good so that also helped the encouragement and then i had another mic a couple of weeks later and then i just started upping the scale yeah you know? and uh do you remember like what that feeling was like the or or actually maybe this is a better question to ask uh, is so I remember uh, like because so I started like November 2019 mm -hmm. um, great time to start doing comedy great time. Uh, perfect great, time. great time to get into it get hooked uh, <laughs> but I remember I got on the cosmic open mic um, and I I'd, I'd been doing some spots you mm -hmm. know but it was like the the 30th so it was like the day before new year's eve mm -hmm. and it was like packed oh. you know mm -hmm. and actually i, I rewatched the tape i did not do that well but the feeling afterwards like i'll just never forget that feeling of like walking like i was just walking through the city and i was just like floating mm -hmm. and and that was really for me that like i was like okay like i got to like, I got to commit myself to this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So do you remember, was it, was it that night? Was there a moment where you, where you really were like, okay, holy shit, this is like, this is the thing, yeah. you know? I think the feeling that I felt was more just like, cause my goal was just to not blank out and space out and say what I want to say, do the five minutes and not fall on stage or something like that that was pretty much like the bare minimum of like let yeah. me not collapse on stage yeah. <laughs> if i didn't collapse it was a great yeah. set but what helped i think was also having the encouragement of my friends the comedians the audience there was a girl that came up to me after and she was surprised that was my first time and she was like oh you're someone to look out for like the, and i remember all these moments. it's very yeah. sweet that people don't have to come up and say these things it's very nice and i kind of remember being like well this is fun i'm gonna keep doing this until it stops being fun Mm -hmm. And kind of the more I signed up, the more I got to practice, the more I got to to write things that was it was more of a gradual thing where this fear of or the self doubt of like, well, what's the point of doing it if it's not going to lead to something versus just well, it's leading it. just enjoying it. And it's also somehow leading into something without me th knowing that it's leading into something. And that's still the mindset that I have now. I'm going to keep doing it until it stops being fun, because otherwise, what's the point? And that was kind of when I started producing shows. I was like, this is taking the fun out of it. Let me step back and focus and have more of a boundary of what I'm producing and when and where. Mm -hmm. So being able to recognize that within myself of being like, well, what's fun about this and what can I do and, and that. So that's kind of the mindset that I have. There wasn't one particular moment where I was like, yes, it was just a very gradual thing of like, this is a good time this is a new skill talking in front of other people also be even being rejected i think that's something that we all could learn to yeah to practice just things just not landing because then you realize it's never as bad as it is in in the real world as it is in your head yeah and so when you bomb or when something doesn't land or when a crowd work thing goes wrong or you get heckled it's just being like i'm gonna have the self-confidence in the moment to deal with it 
rather than overthink and be like, oh my God, I could never get up on stage and do that because what if this happens? What if that happens? So I think it's also just a life skill of figuring things out. Like, mm -hmm. So that's kind of what's made me continue because it's translated well, into other things in my life. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And it's like, I think also even just like, um, like overcoming the, the like what, when you ha like have like a really bad set or mm -hmm. whatever, you know, and uh and then you still go to your next spot like the next night yeah or whatever that in itself to me is like you're working this muscle of like hey something was hard that would make yeah. you be like you know it'd be nicer to just stay home and not feel like i felt like last yeah. night but you still yeah. went and you did it and yeah. then it goes good and then you're like Right. Like, this is just like, yeah. you know, you yeah. have to pick yourself up and keep going. I think if a lot more people had that attitude towards anything in general, just being like, sometimes things just don't pan out, but you keep doing it and you don't take it personally. I think so many people would be better people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. And I'm not, I'm not here to say like, that's what's my, I'm, I'm a perfect person. No, but it's, it's just really pretty much helped me not take myself so seriously. I think the biggest shock is if I saw anyone from high school, they'd be like, you're doing what now? Because I was a very serious person. And then doing this forces you to not take yourself seriously. You have to learn to cut your, to kill your own work very quickly mm -hmm. and early on. When things don't work out, stop clinging onto it for the love of God, let it go. Yeah. <laughs> because it's funny to you, but it's, but you're not performing for yourself, you perform for an audience. Yeah. So it's like learning this balance act of like, do I tweak it? Do I kill the it? The audience is stupid. And they <laughs> exactly. Don't understand how genius. Exactly. I am. <laughs> yeah. But until you know, until you find your niche audience that specifically goes to hear your jokes, you gotta do things that that get the last first. You gotta, you yeah. know, you gotta. It's it's also well, like even a, if you listen to like most big comedians, it's yeah. like they specifically say they put themselves in the situation to go to you know, the comedy clubs, uh, you know, in, if they live in New York or LA or whatever, you know, because it's good to perform to not your audience yeah. to see yeah, yeah, like yeah. it should be funny to most people yeah. and then your audience will also really love it. Yeah. You know? That's why I, I started now when I can, I'm very grateful and, and lucky that I get to travel now to do spots in other places. Like I just, we're talking about Barcelona. I just came back from Barcelona. I go to Lisbon a lot because that forces you to write things that are more universal because I realized uh, when I was in Amsterdam, I was like, oh, a lot of my jokes are very German based. And I didn't, it's almost subconscious because you're living here. Of course, things relate more. And then I'm like, oh crap, I have to redo these things or write new things or try out new stuff that is going to be more universal. And then, yeah. you know, you become better. And it's something that you don't even, it's like, it makes sense. Common sense is like, well, yeah, you're going to have to yeah. obviously write things that aren't very German or German specific. Yeah. But you don't realize it until you're in another place. And like, oh, these jokes don't land because they have no idea what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what an unmail yeah. joke is. They yeah. don't know German bureaucracy. <laughs> like they don't know any of this. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. No, totally. Yeah. What, what, um, do you have, uh, like any, like, any sort of um, like process, like do you do you have times that you try to set that set out to like write, or do you just kind of wait for like when uh, something hits hits you? Like how do you kind of develop your uh, your material? And also the other thing I'm always interested to hear about, especially since you're doing a lot of like producing stuff too, how do you balance the creativity part with like the business part mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so the process is basically i wake up and shit happens to me and i write it down that's <laughs> yeah. basically that's basically it's just the most random things happen to me i'm like okay i should yeah. write this down yeah. i should actually get into the habit of and i think it's a good habit to have to just sit and write every day as you were saying you have a new process where you're just sitting and writing every day i think that's actually a, a better one right now it's just as things happen to me or as i observe things i'm like oh that maybe there's something there and I write it down. And then when it comes down to, I know I have a show where I can try out maybe new stuff and I'll be like, okay, can I squeeze this in or can I add this onto an already existing joke and does this work here and there? Um, regarding the, the business versus the creative side, I have a hard time with that because I do, I am like an overachiever. Like I feel like, okay, I don't need help from anybody. I can do everything by myself. And I've had to really consciously take a step back and be like, if I'm not creating, that's the whole point whether it's with dance choreographies or, or sets, 
if I'm not spending more time doing that, then what am I doing? Because just because I can do the business part of it doesn't mean I need to do it all. Mm -hmm. So I do have a hard time sort of separating from that because I do know the business side of things because I've had to do it for dance as well. And I like talking about it. I like doing it, but I, I also have to just take a step back. So for the producing parts, I've taken a step back here in Berlin what I do now, and I don't know if it'll continue after the new year. I don't know. So far, it's been okay. So let's see. But I do the the Berlin dating game show. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do that once a month now. Uh, if it's a double bill with someone, that's less pressure because then the other person is also going to be putting in work, and then we can kind of bounce ideas off of one another. And then when I go to Lisbon, when I produce shows there, I also have people to help. So I have co-producers. So basically what I just do is I show up and host And that's it. That's kind of the ideal scenario. If someone wanted me just to host, I can just show up and host, no problem. But it's the whole behind the scenes thing that gives me a headache. Mm -hmm. And I realize the more I work with lineups with multiple comedians, the more frustrating it is for me personally, because there's just so many things that you have to then consider. Yeah. So yeah. Well, and all their moving parts and schedules and exactly yeah. yeah. So whereas it's like okay, I can do a theme show where it's just me. The dating game show is just me as a host, and the audience is part of the show. And then when I do double bills or format shows, and another, I only do this in Lisbon, but then I have a co-producer, and then double bills. It's like me and another person. Then it's yeah, it's less of a hassle. It's yeah. just two people, and then we're kind of in the same wavelength usually. About totally. what we're doing, yeah. Do you uh, do you remember like what the like first joke that you wrote that you were like, oh man, like I'm really uh, this is like this is what I'm trying to aspire to do. Um, mm, you mean like a style? That like you're I, I give you an example. Or... It's like for me, and it's fun, like I still do this joke. It's like one of the first jokes that I not one of the first jokes, but like. One of my earlier jokes where it was like, I talk about my parents raising me Buddhist vegetarian and then I'm like, ah, they really wanted me to get bullied. (laughs) And, uh, and like that joke for me when I wrote it was, I was like, okay, I'm talking about like who I am and where I'm from and like, and I'm trying to, and, and I'm, and I'm make I'm trying to at least like make it fun, like make it funny, like my experience with mm-hmm, mm-hmm. how that was and somehow how it was like challenging where so for me I was like oh okay like that was a joke where I was like this is like this is what I want to aspire to try to mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. write more jokes like mm-hmm. um and so yeah did you have ever have you or did you have a moment with like a, a certain joke where you're like oh fuck like this is kind of what I'm trying to do it might be I can't remember a specific moment where like oh this is this is the way but it's where a lot of my jokes kind of lead to it's being a Balkan immigrant, Mm. former refugee type thing. Uh, I have a joke about my, I would like to talk more about my family. Uh, It's one of the jokes I talk about them is, is that they were okay with me doing comedy, but I couldn't tell them I'm in therapy. (laughs) And it's because in comedy, they think I'm making money from it. In therapy, they think it's just a waste of money. I'm losing money. (laughs) And the joke's on them because I'm losing money both ways. (laughs) So that's that's more of this dynamic of like my parents, uh, you know, kind of where I'm from and what I'm doing versus how they perceive it and things. And this is kind of, it's partly true. My parents aren't really big into therapy or, or no, they're not against it, but it's this, it's this very, you know. It's a little more taboo or. Yeah, it's kind of like, well, what's wrong with you type thing or, you know, and it's, and it's completely true. I was in therapy for like a year. I don't think I ever mentioned it to my parents (laughs) because it's, then you have to have a whole talk of being like, okay, well, I'm in therapy. And then it's like, well, what's wrong with you? Are you okay? And it's like, no, I'm fine. That's why I'm going to therapy to be okay. So it's this whole thing of like, is there even a point to tell them now? No. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> whereas with comedy, I was like, oh, by the way, I'm doing this. They're like, oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's more. I think it's more of of that and talking about being, you know, half Bosnian, half Serbian yeah. as well, and and having lived in Florida. So I think it's more of that direction of like my own particular background. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and having parents that are, I'm very very grateful to have my parents because they were they are very open-minded compared to a lot of other parents that my my friends had and 
yeah. saw growing up, but it's, you know, they're still, yeah. they're well, still you can, welcome I parents. think that's the thing. It's like, you can love your parents and realize that you're lucky to have them and still be like, but certain part of my childhood <laughs> yeah. was wild. So yeah. Like, you know. It's, yeah, but, it's, you know, it's a whole thing of like, uh, another thing that I'm kind of working about, but maybe you, you could understand this, but whatever I wanted to do as a kid was shot down very quickly. <laughs> it's always this Balkan depressive mentality of like, for example, I'd be like, oh, I want to be a journalist. I'm like, oh, but you have to go to war zones. Okay, so I want to be um, a veterinarian. Oh, but you have to deal with putting down dogs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I want to be a wildlife photographer. I don't know, whatever. Yeah, it's, you could get, oh, eaten, you by could get eaten by a lion. <laughs> right. Oh, I want to be a psychologist. Oh, but you have to listen to people's problems. All day. It's it's never this like supportive, like, yeah, sure, you can it's do It's like anything. looking for the silver lining, <laughs> except for like if the silver lining was like the bad part. Yeah. Of whatever. <laughs> it's like, or the dark lining. Yeah, just the dark like, lining. oh, the. <laughs> the so black that's pretty lining. much it's And it's like, well, now I'm a comedian, podcaster, and dancer, so what the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is what I am now. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to all these other things you shot. Maybe if you encouraged yeah. all the other things, yeah. it wouldn't be. I bet journalist looks pretty good now, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> exactly. A psychologist looks real good yeah. right now. <laughs> so. um, okay. Well, so uh, I feel like we should uh, wrap up here yeah. soon. Um, but I feel like, you know, good, uh, you know, like engrossing content. I have to have kind of like a gotcha moment. Oh. You know, and so I do want to come for you for a okay. moment. <laughs> uh, you and uh, Eunice yes. both love shitting on Berlin. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, well, then fucking move. <laughs> why, why, why are you so negative Berlin, but you still live here? Well, let's see how for how long I live here. Still, I don't know. I'm thinking of moving. Um, Honestly, Berlin, I wouldn't live, sorry Germans, I wouldn't live anywhere in Germany if not in Berlin. Well, I agree so with that. So yeah. Uh, Germany was the easier visa to get okay. when I moved here. I was, a, I was on an artist visa when I got here. So uh, that was, Wait, you yeah. were on like the same one Dave Adams? The, uh, yeah, except yeah. his was way more restrictive. I don't know what he did. Okay. <laughs> yeah. From what I understand, he could only work in yeah. that field where I had, mine was a general artist visa. I think he had the freelance artist. Uh, there was some okay. distinction there. Yeah. Whereas I was just under the umbrella of an artist. So yeah. whatever artistic thing I could do, I did. So when I first got here, I was doing web and graphic design as well. So any way to basically yeah. make money in addition to teaching dance and performing, yeah. that's what I did. So uh, I could okay. do that. And then eventually I got hired in tourism and then I had a work visa and then I could do whatever as well yeah. eventually. Yeah. So I don't know who Dave Adams pissed yeah. off at immigration. <laughs> he did something wrong. <laughs> they just saw him and they were like, Ugh. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if he speaks German, so maybe that's the, yeah. the, the distinction as well because then yeah. I could argue for my thing. Yeah. But shitting so on you Berlin. you here basically because Germany is just like slutting it up with the visas. Pretty much. It was either Germany or France. And I don't speak French. And French, you have to have like a whole dossier yeah. of things and all that okay. stuff. So, so, you, yeah. so you came for the easy visa. You came to Berlin. and But you still, you feel like Berlin is shitty. There are parts of it that are shitty. Like, I love Berlin. I do. And really, when I came here in 2000... Say it on stage every once yeah. in a while. No. <laughs> <laughs> when I came here in 2009, I came here for a month to do a German course. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, my God, Berlin. Like, I want to be here. And five years later, yeah. I moved here. And it's, it's still insane to me that I live here. It's still crazy because going from always wanting to leave and then leave the States and then being here, it's still insane to me. And then me. you left. And then I left and then I'm here and I'm, and I have my permanent residency and I have an apartment. Like it's still crazy yeah. to me. I'm still very grateful for Berlin, but all right. Don't you agree that how long have you been in Berlin for? Uh, I mean, I've been here on and off since 2019. Okay. Yeah. That's so, so fresh. That's why I think it dies down after I would say year six. You're like, ugh. <laughs> like, <laughs> Because it's it is I make a joke about this, but it's it's a dirty city. Okay, it's not even that dirty. Okay, <laughs> so first I'm gonna we're I'm gonna uncomfortably argue every single point with you for the people. For the people. Um, no, but here's here's my uh, my counter argument to that. So uh, my two friends visited from home mm -hmm. uh, last month. And we were with uh, some of my friends, and, and one of my friends is just started dating a girl who's from Munich. Mm -hmm. And they were asking her, because she was, and she was like, I mean, Berlin, it's disgusting. It's so yeah, dirty. I agree. <laughs> and, and they were like, we're from San Francisco. We would eat off the streets here. Like, Isn't this is that bad? I've never clean. been. I've There's never human been. shit everywhere. I mean, yeah. I mean, so, okay, I, I agree. Do people piss everywhere? 
Yes, but also mm. that means I can piss anywhere. So that's, <laughs> I think that's a wash. Uh, is it, you know, is there like a lot of You and the like, snake. You can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the snake. Me and the snake are just like. Uh, uh, is it, is it like, it's very like graffiti thing, but that's dirty, but it's also cool. I, when I say dirty, I don't even, I'm not even talking about the graffiti, honestly. I'm not even talking about that. Uh, is it just the piss? It's just the piss and the poop. It's just the the transportation Outside of system. Noikern, there's not that much poop. It's pretty. <laughs> there should be no poop. <laughs> <laughs> if you avoid Noikern, you're pretty good on the poop front. It's oh, it's very that's low. The poop. bar is so low. You're like, it's not that much. It's, there should be no poop. That's that's the standard. There should be no human feces on the street at all. That's okay. not okay. All right. So, but, yeah. so the poop. So the poop. Um, I think the public transportation systems, depending on which lines, and I make fun of the U8 because I fucking stand by it. And so it's, it's disgusting. Oh, this is also insane to me. You're from Florida. Yeah, we don't have public you transportation. You don't even have public transportation. <laughs> like this, coming here for me, I'm like public transportation, it's it's a dream. You can yeah. go anywhere but in I the lived, city in 25 but I lived, minutes. I lived in London before and it, they, they clean it. A lot more. Yeah, but the than public here. transport is worse in London. It is worse, but it's, it's more cleaner. expensive. <laughs> it's cleaner. And it's, it's like slower. I'm not one to defend England for anything. Okay. <laughs> but but in it's London, at least it's cleaner. It's cleaner but than even, here. Even that's the funny thing is like I was using the public transport in Denver when I was just back there, mm-hmm. and I'm like, these they trains are from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't I know, know that. Okay. But by the way, it took an hour and a half to go something. It would take 20 minutes by oh, car. Oh, jeez. Okay. Uh, but. Uh, but I'm like, these trains feel like they're from like the 80s yeah. or something. At least in Berlin, if you're taking uh, the U-Bahn, either they have the kind of newish trains mm-hmm. or they have the old trains, which at least kind of feel like classical and like cute. Like if you see one of those going over the that brick yeah, bridge yeah, yeah. to Vashua Strasse, you're like, ooh, it's like yeah. they're romantic. Yeah. Do you know what I found interesting, which is a really Berlin thought? Because, you know, here... On a lot of the trains and metros, you you can open the door as it's still moving. Like it's about to yeah, stop. It hasn't yeah. co- come to complete stop, but you can still open the door to get out. Whereas in Barcelona, I kept pushing. <laughs> like, 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 why is this not open? It's like, yeah, because they don't want you to die. <laughs> yeah. Here in Berlin, they're like, fuck off. We don't care. They're like, you're an adult. Do what exactly. you think is right. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, why is this not opening? What about Barcelona public transport? That is not that much cleaner. It's not that much cleaner, no. I mean, but I only took a couple. Is gross, gross. But that's more the people. (laughs) It's not the physical. So that is Berlin. That is part of Berlin. The people. Don't you find people here very rude, though? It's always a provocation. I feel like when you're like speaking to people from Berlin. Okay, Sophia also said this to me. She's like, the people are rude, but I'm like, yes. But I always have my headphones on, and I have them on, and people still come and talk to me. It's insane. It's there's no sense of headphones in. Don't come talk to me. It's yeah, maybe you need over the ear. I don't know. <laughs> you need I more. Maybe I need more helmets. visually. <laughs> yeah. Makes me wear a helmet, a sound yeah. helmet. <laughs> you just want like a me. face shield <laughs> and like. Um, okay, so the people being rude. That there is an element to that, but what mm-hmm. I like about the rudeness or the coldness mm-hmm. of the people. Mm-hmm. Is then I have no because what I don't like I went to like uh, on the trip where I went to Denver I also I went to uh, see my parents they were visiting friends in mm-hmm. Milwaukee and Wisconsin like mm-hmm. Midwest mm-hmm. like prime niceness and then I have to have a fucking conversation with everybody every single person <laughs> I ride the elevator with everybody's so kind here I'm like everybody's rude so I can be rude yeah. you know like. If you are having an issue, I just don't look at it. I don't acknowledge your <laughs> issue. I keep moving because that's the city we live in. And I'm and, and there is there is a some, bonus to that. That is there, true. There's a uh, you know a kind of certain advantage to that. That is true. I will. Well, what I said earlier is people approaching me. I'm like, well, I, I am yeah. rude. I am <laughs> <Yeah>. not. <laughs> yeah. Don't come talk to me. You have to just be like, nine. <laughs> no, I, I don't want it. But I'm always like. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. I always make a show of it, like, I don't hear you. <laughs> well, first of all, uh, another tip for me, for you, is uh, <laughs> you can't take out both. You have to just take out the one, you know, just like, because then you're like, I'm I'm just, I'm opening the door a crack. Like, I'm not, I'm not, if you if you take out both, you've opened the door and been like, welcome in. Well, but this is also maybe my fluidity inside of being like, is this man trying to rob me? <laughs> let, yeah. me let me get ready. Yeah. <laughs> take out the yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking out the <laughs> That's maybe that. Okay. Yeah. I think it's because I've been here for so long. Eight year, over eight years now. It's such a long time. 
But it's a to thriving be here. Met- metropolitan city full mm. of humanity and mm. art. Mm. There's a, a, the, a crazy English comedy scene here. That is true, the yeah. The music is amazing. And shit, I mean, now it's more expensive. But can, imagine going to any city in the States and renting an apartment for the Oh, yeah, you're your comparing. Apartment. Oh, I would never live in the States <laughs> unless I had to. Like, Wait, any other European but, yeah. city. It's the cheapest European city that's like, because you guys are always like, it's a capital city, it's shit. And I'm like, yeah, and it's cheap. Well, there's Lisbon is cheaper and nicer and sunnier. That's kind of where I'm maybe potentially heading to. Have you ever been but, down that one party street at like a Saturday night? No, but I don't go to parties. I don't go to the equivalent of those streets here. So why would yeah, I be but there? They don't have equivalent of those streets there. Well, okay. When I'm talking about like the Warsaw Strasse, like area of like the, the it's little a, Lisbon whole is football. a little bit more dangerous. You think? A little bit. How? Have you know. been to Lisbon? Have something yeah. happened to you? What happened to you? Nothing happened to me, but like I went down that street. First of all, I like I was with these Irish guys who were. Well, that was your first mistake. That was. Yeah. <laughs> that was you looked like non Portuguese. Yeah, you yeah. specifically are speaking English. Uh, well, I was with my Portuguese. I have a friend, so uh, this this maybe is too long of a story for the podcast. But <laughs> Anya and I met in Costa Rica, uh, okay. working at a hostel. Okay. And when it, w- it was, uh, we were the two volunteers, and the third volunteer was this Portuguese guy named Joao, of course. Joao, of course. Uh, yeah. uh, and so I v- went to visit him, and I, I had the most magical. I, it was the most European experience mm-hmm. I've had being here. Mm-hmm. Like as you imagine, you know, mm-hmm, late mm-hmm. night dinners with wine, yeah, yeah, yeah. food, <laughs> like conversation. Yeah. You know, it was amazing. Yeah. But I mean, and and you know, I had a great time. I love li- beautiful city, yeah. amazing. Love Lisbon. I'm just trying to defend Berlin here. <laughs> okay. I do feel like, you know, if I had to trust a German police officer or Portuguese police officer, oh. really, German police don't do shit here. They well, do not do shit. I've had to call them because uh, I had when I lived in fucking Hellersdorf, that's another story for another time, uh, my neighbor was the absolute fucking worst. Like, he was the worst piece of shit. And I had to call them um, once because it was during the COVID lockdowns as well. And he had, like, a whole party of people that were screaming. Sh- it was a whole thing. They did not... They showed up two hours later, did not do fuck all. They do not... The po- German police, I'm sorry, they don't do well, anything here. a party, here. you're right. But I see that as But just advantage. during the during the the, the 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 rules where you couldn't have yeah, more than yeah. like one person in fair, the apartment. Fair. I see. I, yes. Okay. But also in another time that I lived where I was living next to another crazy neighbor who was beating his wife and kids and they didn't do anything either. I, I mean, mean, to be fair, she has to be, but don't have they don't great do anything. track record. No. I will say that. No. But. But did you end up having to call the police there? Or what? No, no, you, okay. No. So you just felt unsafe. Oh, you went on the pink street? I, we went or on the pink street? street okay. Or whatever. There was just a guy, I've never seen a guy so high on cocaine before mm. with just like a sandwich bag of it. Like, <laughs> okay, oh, Jesus, you okay. know, like just, and, and like, and I don't know. I just, uh, I was like, oh, okay. And you felt uneasy. But I felt he didn't, uneasy. But he didn't do anything. No, no, he didn't do anything. Okay. But just like there's some of those little streets, it was like, there's, I mean, I'm sure that maybe there's an equivalent here, but it's like yeah. any big drunk street. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. always like, there's a possibility of something happening and i yeah, generally here in berlin feel very and i mean of course i'm a man so it's a little bit different but mm-hmm. it's like walking around at night on most places i feel pretty like safe and comfortable generally for a big city yeah for a big city generally although the last couple of shows or i've been followed here in berlin like from the station to the show like i've been followed mm. via car via on foot like it's which hasn't happened to me ever here so yeah, it's but that's also because people are oh, that could happen anywhere. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, that's yeah, unfortunately, that's unfortunately just, yeah. yeah, I don't know Berlin. Just, I think it's just, just more just apologize. Just, just, just apologize and say Berlin's good. We can clip it and wrap this thing up. <laughs> just say Berlin, Berlin is good sometimes. Sometimes okay. I that's will say that's get, the best I you're gonna. I will say when I was in Barcelona, I was missing Berlin. I will say that because Barcelona is very pretty. I was by the beach. It was very nice, but there was a part of a, like I kind of missed my my life. But that could yeah. just be because I've you I have, have my own le- little thing, thing here. here and yeah. yeah. So I will say it's not that I don't miss Berlin. Oh, definitely when I go to visit Florida, I'm like, Berlin's the yeah. best. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, I want to be back in Berlin You're right away. <laughs> oh, for sure. Two days in, I'm like, uh, I want to go okay. back. Yeah. So I do the, I do miss Berlin right. sometimes, but yeah. 
It's well, easy to shit on Berlin, though. You got Berlin go is a great city. <laughs> and she's wrong. Are you hired for the tourism board that I used to work <laughs> at as a Berliner? Right? No, I'm actually the problem. The Germans hate me. They're like, shut up about Berlin. <laughs> They're like, we want <laughs> The housing prices are already bad. Exactly. Like, and I'm like, yeah. everyone get in here. <laughs> That's how I was when I first came to I was like, why aren't, is it anywhere living in Berlin? It's, and then I'm here. I'm like, oh, fucking everybody leave Berlin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Too many of us here. <laughs> Uh, well, should we spin the wheel one time? Sure, you're gonna have to to so start. You, you, you spin the wheel, I and then I'll it. yeah, give it a give it a spin. Oh, I don't all right, spin drugs. It. drugs, just question so, mark, drugs, question drugs. Mark. Uh, so we could we could do a little like uh, you know, I could be like a like a drug dealer, and you could try to buy drugs from me. <laughs> Um, I've never taken drugs ever. So this or is you be could good. be the drug dealer and I could buy, okay. try to buy drugs from you. Okay. I'll um, be the drug dealer. Or I could try to sell drugs to you and you're not interested. Um, and I'll be the drug dealer. You want to be the drug I'll dealer? I'll be the drug dealer. Okay. Because Eunice says I look like a drug dealer when I wear a cap and, and my, okay. my hat. So I'll be the I'll Oh, be the okay. Yeah, yeah. You, I can see it. You, you, <laughs> I can like, see like, like, not like street level, but more like kingpin <laughs> shit. You know, like you have, yeah, you're sending yeah, people oh, out. Yeah. You're like, the shipment's coming in. Yeah. You're using like an Excel <laughs> spreadsheet. You're like, that's there at I'm midnight. Very uh, yes, yes. I got yeah. the card reader in case of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you accept car payments. Okay, so so uh, I'm going to try to um, buy drugs from you then. Okay, okay. So like... Hello, sir. It's How are <laughs> you doing today? <laughs> First of all, why do I feel like the way this is starting, I'm coming in like a like a, like a a shop, like a bodega, where like I think in the... the, the oh, no, no, no. The, you're the sitting at a... No, this is the scenario. You're sitting okay. at a cafe, minding your own business. I, I see you. I clock you as someone that could buy drugs. I come sit down. I'm like, hello. How are you doing today, sir? <laughs> Okay, perfect, perfect. That is, which is also very much my real life reality. Yeah. People think this is someone who wants to buy drugs, and I'm like, I'm not. All right. Um, uh, so, okay, I'm just like drinking my coffee, and oh, hi. So, uh, yeah, I guess pull up a seat. Uh, yeah. Don't mind if I do. How are you doing today? I'm doing. I'm doing good. Mm -hmm. uh, what? Can I help you with something? You looking for anything interesting? You look like you're visiting in town, or? Um, I am. I'm visiting. Um, I have to say, so far, I have <laughs> loved the city. Berlin is just—it's clean, it's safe, it's affordable. I can't imagine why someone wouldn't love the city. I will say, I have been—you know—I'm a little bit of a, you know. Uh, well, a speaking of affordable. <laughs> 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 This uh, is like the anti dare program. That we yeah, did yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So speaking of affordable, nice. I got a. I got, got a, some. I, got, I, I could use I a know, little something to smoke or. Yeah. Okay. I got. Got this I, is gonna take the edge right off. You look like you have a high stress job. Do you have a high stress job? Sir? I do have a. Yeah. I, I my job is to make people laugh, and oh. a lot of times they don't want to. So, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So then stressful. I recommend I recommend this. I don't know. I don't know any drugs. <laughs> yeah, this, <laughs> this drug. little baggie. Yeah. The drug. Bead. And now, am I taking? Is this something orally, or do I take this <laughs> in the note? Like, do I smoke? It's it? not my business how you take it. <laughs> <laughs> you take it how you take it and, and what is this what's the price for what's the price point for for this because you you gave me the first thing here mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh mm -hmm. and then you have the second thing and so i'm just wondering what the kind of spread of price and are you using the metric system for this or you're using i know nothing what, about okay what's our system here. again <laughs> <laughs> Imperial. Imperial. okay right I'm, I'm using whatever I fit into this little baggie. That, okay, that's so what it's that just is. a bag it's size. Just a bag, a bag <laughs> this size. is a baggy size of drugs. Okay, great. Um, uh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, and yeah. and so how much for the thing that I can either snort, snort smoke, or ingest, <laughs> or inject, I guess. Uh, however, dealer's choice. How much for that one? So normally, uh -huh. this goes for... Do I need to keep my voice down? Do we need to be worried or? No, 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 no. You're good. You're good. Don't you're do good. anything you're here. Good. So. They, don't, <laughs> they, they don't show up until two hours <laughs> yeah. later. I'll be well gone. Uh, this is usually, I don't know anything about drugs. Okay. Yeah, this is 50 euro a bag. 50 but for euro. you, uh -huh. as a newcomer into this lovely, beautiful city of ours, uh -huh. uh, I'll say 30. 30? Well, yeah. you're going to give me a 20 euro yes. markdown. Yes. 30 yes. euro feels like a good deal for a baggy size <laughs> of uh, substance, uh, unnamed. Um, now, 
here's the thing. I don't have any cash on. It's me. okay. I got a card reader. You have a card <laughs> reader. Okay. You <laughs> do you take uh, American Express? I do. I do. I take it. American I Express take, works I take with Bitcoin as well. Oh, I take it. oh, okay. I actually have a couple. I have a little uh, a bit of a coin right <laughs> right here. We could just now for this. Could I have both? What would be the price point if I wanted? Do you have a two for one? Like if I got so it's thirty for this, but if I got both, could we say thirty five? Mm. I'll give them both to you for 40. 40. I'm a backpacker. I'm on a budget. I don't have. So you know you're going to need it, though, during your trip. You're going you're gonna to really enjoy your backpacking trip, though. Cause That's it, cause true. Because both can last you for how many days? Uh, for, for, uh, I'm here for two weeks. Oh, yeah. We'll definitely get both. Definitely. Yeah. In fact, should both. I take your number? <laughs> <laughs> Here's my, what's, what's the, uh, it's not WhatsApp. Telegram? It's telegram. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Uh, cool. Well, yeah, let's, 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 how about let's do this. Can we say 40 now, but if I order again, we'll do both for 30. We can do that. We can do that. We can do that. All right. Deal. That's deal. a deal. 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 Thank you. Cool. Well, <laughs> pleasure doing business with you. Pleasure's on mine. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> People listening um, to this are going to be like, this woman. Is yeah. <laughs> Clearly, um, can you tell how many drugs I've done in my yeah. life based on that interaction? <laughs> I feel like your parents would be very proud of how much you struggled with that role play. Um, that, well, that was that was perfect. I think what a perfect uh, <laughs> drug, no dealing to, <laughs> drug deal scenario. Uh, Eunice, see that? <laughs> yeah. uh, I think maybe the problem was you were missing the hat. I was missing the hat, yeah. and my and my. Co- I think if yeah. I had the hat, I could be a little it, bit more. Yeah, it could have yeah, shady. We could have yeah. sold it, but I'll, I'll make it. You know. We can, I'll, I'll do something with the green screen to make it seem more okay. like drug. Sketchy yeah, in an sketchy. alley. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, take, just take a photo of a street in Neukölln. And yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Get out of the poop. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, well, this was awesome. Thank yeah. you so much for uh, doing it. Um, please, I'll have the links in the description below for the people who are watching. Uh, if, but if, if they're listening, where can people find you? I am on, unfortunately, on Instagram <laughs> more. Who is unfortunately. it? Uh, you can find me under Jana Fazich. So you're going to spell that out for them. Otherwise, it's not going to make sense, right? Yep. Yes. Uh, do you want to... Sp- it's Z-A-N-A-F-E-J-Z-I-C. Yeah. So just do the 15-second rewind like exactly, three times. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the link will also be in the description of the episode. Yeah. Uh, so check her out on uh, Instagram. And uh, and comes you you run shows here in Berlin. Yeah, run a, I run a monthly dating a monthly, show. Yeah, it's the Berlin comedy uh, dating show. It's basically if you are single and you have a friend, you can come to the show, and your friend uh, is going to answer games show style questions for you to help you win a date with other single people in the audience. So it's a lot of fun. You got to bring a good wingman, basically, and uh, everyone gets drink tokens. So that yeah. sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah. so that's uh, the next one is on December second at Z Bar. Okay. And and if you follow me on Instagram, I have the links there. Uh, let's see if that's every first Friday. But for now, it's it's uh, December 2nd. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Well, uh, come see her live. Follow her on Instagram. Check out her shows. And uh, thank you. This was yeah, awesome. Thank you so much for having yeah. me. Yeah, it was great. <laughs>